Hi Obvious, I'm Sam and welcome back to Reforged Shamans. Welcome to part two, building and painting Silver Knights Space Marines. In this episode, we're going to paint at least the Assault Intercessors and the Land Speeder. Hopefully we have time for the Tactical Marines. You guys know how much I love Tactical Marines, especially after we tried so long to put those guys together. What I really want to bring in this video is how I've chosen paints with really strong pigments to make it really easy to paint the models. I really want to make sure that we keep motivated and we keep producing miniatures that are going to look amazing as an army together. Each piece does not need to be incredible by itself. Each piece needs to be completed and not in the box over there by itself, which is something that all of us will struggle with. I 100% was painting silver and black, but I just saw that it wasn't popping. So I added silver and blue, and then we had too much blue and gold, so we had to dull the gold down. It's totally okay to change your plan, and it happens a lot, particularly when you find new recipes, new ways of painting and your painting skills increase. I really want us to make sure that we're just enjoying the process through this whole thing. I wanted to keep track of the work we've actually done. I find it's really motivational and it'll help us build a balanced army. You see, we finished Captain Kintia, the captain in Gravis armor, the five man assault intercessor squad. We've built the 10 man tactical marine squad and we've built land speeder mobile. In my head, I've got at least another few pieces to go in this army. Usually you're looking at about 1500 points, which is maybe two to three of each slot we saw originally. I've talked a little bit about assembly painting. Um, some of the strengths I see is that you're using one blue, you can have a lot of that blue on your palette, you can add a lot of water, it won't dry out, you'll continue to use it. You don't have to clean your brush in between. A lot of the time when you're focusing on a single model, you're changing colors, you have to keep cleaning your brush, keep making sure that you don't contaminate the next paint with the first paint. For example, we've got blue and gold. I really don't want my gold on the next model I paint come out with blue in it. So I thoroughly clean the brush. You can avoid all of that purely by making sure that you're just doing the blues all together, cleaning your brush, moving on to all the golds or all the black. I want you to take a look at how well this paint covers. I'm using Citadel paint and I'm choosing covers that paint incredibly well. While what you can't see is additional coats that might go over the models, you can just see from this how incredibly well pigmented these paints are. They cover almost immediately. Even one coat is incredibly satisfying. I chose these deliberately so we can get maximum color maximum impact for minimum effort that's going to keep you motivated If I could show more of the wash process, I would. 
Really though, it all looks exactly the same, so there's no real point. But just see how well Null Oil colors, and when it's dried, you'll see how incredible this paint is. What we're doing after it's dried is we're dry brushing. Now dry brushing is a really interesting technique that basically has only a touch of paint on the brush and it just catches the raised area. You can see with the sergeant there that it's really catching the top areas. getting out the Gawthor Brown which is the same colour we used to highlight the bases. As you can see I'm really not overthinking on it, I'm doing it straight from the pot. We're just going to highlight the gun holsters and pouches on the intercessor bodies. There really isn't one way to do this right. I like to go around the edges and then just put random brush strokes. You can see I'm using Cabalite Green for the accent colours such as eyes, lenses and the plasma coils. I chose to go with a really simple accent colour and keep it really consistent because we're looking to finish this project and we're looking to make it as easy and as simple as possible. You can change up the accent colour to whatever you please, but again, this is about finishing up. Let's just be real, Sterling Mud is just an incredible paint. I'm using the Games Workshop Texture Tool. I recommend you get one. It really does make it incredibly easy and it's super easy to clean off once you've finished using it. This product's made my life so much easier because it gives you an incredible base pretty much just straight out of the pot. Now, we're gonna highlight it just once with Gawthor Brown the color we're using to highlight brown just to make it pop a little bit give it a touch more dimension but you really don't even need to do that Some crazy people paint from their bases brown. It's a never on this channel. Always black rim, no regret. If you do want to use Transfers seriously, Microsol and Microset are the way to do it. The blue Microsol goes on before and the red Microset goes on once the transfer is there. You can see the difference. Transfers do look painted on. Some models that are definitely going to be used, they're going to survive to the end. Assault Intercessor Demion is an absolute beast. He will destroy in melee. The Sergeant running into the fray, plasma pistol in hand. 
And there's just a couple, maybe just one particular model I see there, an absolute derp. Definitely pegged to die first every time. And I'm sorry to him, but I have no regrets. The cooler the model is, the more you actually want to use it and the more you want to create a story. Again, this is our hobby. So we actually want to create a story and a purpose for continuing to do it. I think we might even do a little montage of Damian himself. He's really come out much better than I expected. intercessors that turned into a marathon effort we definitely won't have time to paint the tactical marines for this episode uh, i really want to make sure that the episodes are enjoyable for you to watch cinematically as much as they are for me to do uh, so we really focus on just the assault intercessors and the land speeder today After all my talk about 3rd edition, it's probably no surprise that I ended up with the Land Speeder. The Land Speeder has a little bit of damage to the side, a little bit of pain will cover that. Don't you worry too much. We'll just take photos on the other side. Painting vehicles is just like painting inventory. You follow the same process, you use the same colours, and you just apply it on a bigger scale. In this, we're just gonna start with the same blue, we're gonna add the same blacks, and we're gonna make as consistent as possible. On the land speed as a heavy bolter, we're going to paint it black because all the other marine guns have been black. Those touches of consistency will really help make the army coherent on the battlefield. The sheer satisfaction I'm getting out of this land speeder getting completed after all those years in a box is just outrageous. This model is coming up so well. I think what I want to highlight there is that painting vehicles is exactly the same formula. You just have to be a little bit more careful. We really want to make sure the wash goes into the crevices only. If it does dry on the flat panels, you kind of have an issue where it starts to be a bit more splotchy. I do find that you additionally dry brush those areas. You can turn into a bit more of a weathered look, but it's still not as clean as you really want those models. I don't mind a bit of battle damage. You'll see in the captain particularly that we did. I got a bit of the um, Sterling mud on his cape. That's battle damage. Ain't nobody got time to scrape that off. A couple of the guys are going to have a little bit of paint on a... Uh, I think there's Sergeant Demion has a little bit of blue on his uh, backpack. That's going to have to be battle damage. We really don't have time to be perfectionists. It'll just demotivate us. Let's plow ahead. Let's look at it as a whole 
and let's just be proud of what we've created. I really want to talk about the dry brushing effect. I use Artist Opus brushes because they have a lot of complexity in their dry brushing. When I started dry brushing, I started with just makeup brushes. Um, they're incredibly effective and they're incredibly cheap in comparison, uh, but uh, using Artist Opus just warms my heart, so I do it. Plus my girlfriend bought me the whole thing and all of them are super cool, so I love to use them. If you start using Artist Opus for everything, however, you'll find that no model is good enough to use your Artist Opus. I've got a lot of really fine detail work, but again, that is for a really complex model. What happens when we build a complex, or build and paint a complex model? We don't finish it. I've got Bayard's Revenge just sitting in my cabinet over there. One day I'll get back to him, but I would rather produce models. You see the brushes that I'm using, they're a little bit frayed. Uh, they're all Citadel, mainly a medium base or a small base brush. Uh, if I go through them and throw them out, I don't feel bad. If I go through and ruin an artist opus brush, I will feel bad. <laughs> I'd rather just not put that pressure on myself. I've used the artist opus brush for my Black Templars. It paints incredibly. Use the artist opus brush to get the complex dry brush that I want just to give this army a little bit extra. Works amazingly. But again, every time, I haven't shown you on here, but every time I use artist opus, I clean the brush with brush soap. When I use Citadel, I just dip it in some water. You know, it really dramatically reduces how much I worry and speeds up the painting. So I'm still going over with Rune Lord Bronze. I feel like I really should just start painting Rune Lord Bronze to begin with and then highlight that. That's not what I've chosen to do with these models because again, I was just guessing and I really didn't want it to look too much like Ultramarines. The Rune Lord Bronze gives it that duller look whereas Retributed Gold really does mix with blue to make it look like Ultramarines. We want this to be our own individual chapter. Colors changed, so you know we're getting serious now. Thanks so much for joining me. Originally, I was aiming this at only the people that I thought cared, which were existing war gamers. Uh, but even for everybody's interests, I'm going to really enjoy adding a few more tips and tricks about how I produce models, what decisions I make, what tools I use, and hopefully in the next video where we paint those tactical marines, I can put a little bit of focus on the tools I use use a wet palette, certain brushes, certain ways that I get paint out to make sure the paint flows cleanly. Definitely don't show you the whole process here. I feel like the models so far are looking incredible and I'm still really surprised at the colors that we're using. Uh, much better than I actually anticipated. Completely unplanned, but I have no regrets. It looks amazing. That's what this project is about. Just making it happen, painting those models.
Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I've really enjoyed it so far. I've loved the positive comments. I've laughed a lot at the comments about how much I can improve. I totally agree, and I will try and make this the best experience for you guys. So, so far, we've painted Captain Kintia in Gravisama. We've painted the five-man assault intercessor squad. Painted Land Speeder Mobile. We're going to paint next episode the 10-man tacticals. Surely they need a rhino. I've got a rhino somewhere. I will find it and we will actually that was part of a great deal. I think there's some space walls in there. Let's hope the next episode isn't too far away. I'll see you then. Hello hobbyists. Welcome back to Reforged Armies. Hi hobbyists and welcome back to Reforged Armies. Hi Obvious, I'm Sam and welcome back to Reforged Shamis. We're gonna build it. Hi Obvious, my name's Sam and welcome back to Reforged Shamis.